Hey guys, this is Elise. Welcome back to Catholic Christian Friends for Intersectional Racial Healing. Today, I would love to introduce to you one of my very best friends, Catherine. Good to be with you, Elise. Thank you for doing this project and for inviting me on. Thank you so much. It's so great to all have your friendship in my life and so excited to do this project with you and our panel discussions. Um, what made you interested to join this project? Honestly, it's the relationships. There are so many people in my life impacted by the conversations happening in our country right now on race. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those relationships are within my own family. So I have siblings who are biracial, um, two brothers who were adopted as babies, and I've grown up with them. Um, and then I've chosen people in my life who I've also invested in and learned about their stories. So over time, I've realized that I need to adapt my approach to the conversation and also keep growing and keep listening as well. Yeah, thank you so much. I already have a, I already have a couple of questions just from what you shared. Um, before we dive right in, I'm curious to hear, given that you're coming from such a place of richness with love in your heart and, and your family and so many parts of your life are part of this conversation, what are you hoping that others will gain out of this project, whether they're panelists, other friends, or uh, viewers? I just hope everybody's life is enriched as mine has been by the complexity and beauty of all the stories out there. Um, I think when we close ourselves into one narrative or one way of seeing people, we lose the beauty that the human family has because we all share the common human story, but we each have individual contributions to make to it that is really our own. So I really appreciate learning from and growing in relationship with people um, who show me different aspects of what it means to live this life fully. And there's a lot of pain in that, but there's also a lot of goodness in overcoming some of those barriers. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. That's a beautiful intention. And since you're one of my best friends, I know that's just so reflective of who you are. <laughs> And um, yeah, so let's dive in and help our, help our listeners and the other panelists get to know you in this area a little bit more. Um, you shared earlier that you have a family with uh, multiple ethnicities, multiple races. How do you identify? How do the members of your family identify? So it's interesting, Elise. I've always identified um, not with color specifically because I, I have a French Canadian Irish um, ethnicity background, but I've never had to make space for that what part of who I am and neither has my family. Um, my family has never wrestled with a concept of race even or words to talk about it. Um, but adopting two biracial brothers that conversation um, almost has to arise a little bit because there has been different cultural elements brought into the home as my brothers grow up and um, as they actually really identify more with a black um, identity than with a white identity. And as they make those statements and bring those aspects into our family, um, there's a certain wrestling with, we love you as people, but part of your identity is this new aspect that we've not considered. Wow. Wow. There's a lot of, there's a lot of layers. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more on that. Would you mind sharing a moment or two that, that is vivid for you in your memory? Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to share a really joyful moment first because I think these conversations, it's, you know, it's a mix of beautiful and difficult. And my brothers brought so much delight into my life. And I remember the moment the youngest one was brought back from Florida. Um, it was the middle of the night and I heard him screaming in the next room. And I leaped out of bed and ran in there to see this adorable little brown baby, super muscular. He was like a muscle man. Um, <laughs> I 
with like gray eyes and long eyelashes and just fell in love with him. Um, fell in love with both of my brothers like that. And after that, seeing them with that older sister view, um, it was difficult seeing them struggle with various things as they get got older. Not all of them having to do with race, but that is a very key underlying component that I didn't necessarily realize or name um, for a long while. But I had a phone conversation with one of them where I felt the space widen between us um, because he brought that up, that actually I'm 100% Black, which that, you know, by definition is saying you and the rest of the family are white. And also that means I don't feel as close to you which that it just hurt me at least but it was also so beautiful that he could share that because i want to know what's going on with both of them but being teenage boys that's just not <laughs> happening <laughs> so i really appreciated knowing that there was this other piece but um felt that that could also be a dividing factor mm, yeah words are words are so powerful sometimes a singular word, sometimes a phrase, and the words that are used in the interior life of the home, the interior life of our self-talk, our self-narrative, and the language that we use across with those that are not part of our family. Um, could you share about a, another moment when, when that impact of language and the power of language was felt for you? in this area of race, whether it's inside the home or outside the home, and yeah. having to navigate through that with not just like, like you, you, you grew up in a family with multiple races, multiple ethnicities, and mm -hmm. so you're ahead of so many people in terms of having room in the heart to love and to, to take in as our own type of sense, like you're ahead of so many, and yet I'm hearing, I'm hearing this, I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm hearing this struggle with language and, and figuring out personal identity through development and um, mm -hmm. language trying to catch up. So when it's challenging at home and then having to navigate the outside world, I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> you are, you are. Um taking that approach or what you learn um, inside the home outward, you make certain assumptions based on what you have experienced. And so I having experienced that di natural diversity, it was within my own household. Um, my sisters are blonde. So, you know, we had all the looks like we, we were pretty much used to that diversity. I quickly realized that there were other narratives around how color was seen. And that was super painful because my assumption was that racism or certain experiences weren't as common as they actually were. And also that the dialogue about it was pretty much non-existent um, in a friendly way. And that there were certain narratives you had to fit yourself into. And I didn't really fit those because my way of experiencing people of color was a lot more intimate. Um, you know, I'm going fishing with my brothers as they play ghetto music with, you know, the cap on and they're like the chains around their necks. Like I was used to <laughs> the cultural experience that so many people of color have in their lives. So it was not as much of a surprise as some of these aspects were in the world around me just the narrative around them was and I remember there was a distinct point when I had to go to the laundromat for a while um, when I saw this black man who I really enjoyed um, connecting with at first we were both reading while waiting for our laundry to dry and we connected um, real quick and then um, in a split second he turned the conversation to racism and quickly I saw that he was going this way, but he basically ended with his thesis that 
you as a white person are automatically racist. And that just took me aback. That was not um, part, that was not a particular narrative that I'd heard before. And um, it kind of broke my heart with all the friendships I have and the relationships I have in my family. I mean, one, if it's true, that's really tragic. And two, if it's not true, it's sad that people believe this and why do they believe this? And um, it, it was hard because at that point, I realized there would be no more dialogue because he kept pushing that one point. And I felt like I didn't really know how to grapple with or make sense of this other way of seeing race than I had encountered. Um, and it also showed me that I didn't really understand all the underlying um, experiences and realities that were part of this conversation, that it wasn't as simple as like just, you know, an aspect of your life. It really gets down to that root of personal identity for a lot of people. And it's really hard to have conversations about identity anytime. Um, but I think, especially as someone who's never identified as white, it was hard to wrap, wrap my mind around identifying as black and then identifying others as automatically racist. It's hard to have a conversation when you don't understand the terms that are being used. That is so true. That is so true. It makes a lot of sense. And um, I, I just, as your friend, I just feel so much pain when I hear what you're telling me. And as your friend, I'm like, so mad. I'm like, I want to be at the laundromat. I want to tell, I want to show them. Here's a person of color. I'm like best friends with her. Like, <laughs> you know, like I just, <sighs> sorry. I just, I feel like, um, given that this is an unscripted interview slash intro to you, <laughs> that just <laughs> naturally comes up. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess like I have a couple other questions, at least for this little video. The first one is, um, as you're encountering these moments where you're like simultaneously experiencing not belonging with someone out there and then feeling an interior sense of, I don't belong, um, what happens for you? Like, how do you process and navigate through a space where you're like, where can I land? Or maybe you're not like, where can I land? Maybe you're like, I just need a boat to like keep floating through. I, I don't know. Um, how you, do you are so that? good with asking questions. I can like almost visualize your questions when you ask them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, um, I love that image of you being with me in the laundromat. Um, I think that that answers a lot of the question about how to, how to enter into these conversations. It's as friends and not as strangers or people who don't understand each other. Because we may not understand the terms, but we understand each other. And I get to know you, Elise. I know um, the person that your story has helped form. I know, you know, the gifts you bring to the world and um, the people that love you. That is a conversation which is more helpful than trying to have a conversation with someone where you are completely relying on terms and language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for those thoughts. Um, I, I think I'm hearing, tell me if I'm hearing you wrong. I think I'm hearing that when you're not finding a sense of belonging in the language that is available, the limits of the language that's available, you're finding belonging in relationship. And through relationship, you can progress forward into further growth, further understanding and further self development. Am I hearing you right? Yeah, honestly, Growth and um, learning are both such hard work. You can't do that, I think, without a safe place to actually be able to have the conversation. 
and there's such a risk of hurting each other that when you're in a you're in a relationship you're in a you're in some way safe from that relational damage that could happen mm -hmm. um, so i feel very blessed to have you and other people in my life to share um your own stories and also to be able to see it's not just the story to be able to see the person um i think that helps give you a lens and through empathy to be able to see not just what happened but how it affected my friend and um what can i do about this that's a question we want to run to immediately it's the active question there is no question more active, I think, than showing another person that their story is worth it and that they are worth it. That is so beautiful. Well, Catherine, I am so excited for our upcoming mini panel talks and friendship talks about these topics and together demonstrating that these topics don't have to be intimidating or threatening for personal relationships that are the most important to us. Um, so with that, we'll close this intro video. Uh, please stay tuned and uh, we'll connect with you all next time. Bye.